Hey guys, Dan here with Hardly Brief Programming. I am excited to announce the first video or episode of 2016 for our Make It RPG series. Today we're going to be taking a look at the quest system, the starts of our quest system. Uh, hopefully you guys are pretty excited after reading the title of this video or seeing the thumbnail or whatever, but I know it's been highly requested that I bring it back and I told you in the channel update that I was doing my best to kind of get some information up and running after I lost a ton of information uh, and therefore that's why you see a new project here. Uh, but therefore, that's, it's taking me a while to get up and going again. Uh, but I found, or I got a lot of the quest information, the quest system that I was telling you guys about in the channel update video uh, back. And that's what we're going to be working on over the next several videos. Today, we're going to kind of set up the basic structure of it. I'll talk briefly about some of the some of the ways that we'll be doing questing. Uh, but I basically want to make a pretty robust system that allows you guys to manipulate and change it based on your needs for your project. Um, the other thing that I'm really excited to announce, uh, and I know you guys will be very excited, is uh, all the scripts that we're going to be working on over the next however long uh, will be available for free to download off my GitHub page, uh, which is in the description, the link is in the description below, or off the Google Drive, which is also down in the description below. So you guys can use these scripts however you want for whatever projects you want. Um, they're all up for you to use for free. And uh, so hopefully you guys will use them and enjoy them. Uh, I do request or I do ask you guys to, just because I think it's helpful to take the time to try to follow along with these videos, type out the information. I think it's a better learning tool than just copying and pasting uh, because you'll run into some problems along the way. And when you actually work through those problems, that's where you're going to really learn to get better at coding and working within Unity. So again, that's my recommendation. If you guys don't want to do that, that's okay. All the stuff will, will be available to download for free. Um, but having said all that, with that long-winded intro, let's go ahead and get started with our questing system. So here I'm in a brand new project again. You don't need to start a new project. You can use your existing ones. I'm going to open up our project folder and I'm going to create some folders real fast. We're going to have a quest system folder. Uh, I'm going to try to move pretty quick through this video just because we're going to do a lot of basic setup and I know you guys have seen all that so I don't want to keep doing that. Uh, we're going to have a quest class and actually want to go ahead and create a couple more, uh, one more, two more folders on our quest system. We're going to have a scripts folder and under scripts folder we're going to have an interface folder. So we're going to be using interfaces for this. So we'll have interfaces. I'm going to move the quest in the, under scripts. Uh, and then under scripts we're going to create two more classes today. They're going to be quest objective and the last one will be uh, quest information. Right, and then we're going to create three interfaces for each of those. So we're going to create a I quest. We're going to create. If it goes back to it, we're going to create a I quest objective. And the last one we're going to create is a I quest information. And I'll explain all these as we go along. I just want to go ahead and get these up and started, or up and running and created. I'm going to double click on all of them. I'm going to open them up in Visual Studio. We will be using Visual Studio like before. Uh, if you need to learn how to do that for your project, then you can go ahead and watch a tutorial on that. I've talked about it several times. Uh, new Unity uh, allows you directly to work with it. So the newest updated version of Unity. All right, so now that we have that, let's go into our quest because that's the bulk of where, or this is the, the meat of what the quest system is, right? The object quest is what's important. Uh, and right away, we're going to delete model behavior. We're not going to be, this is not a game object. This is just a data object that we're creating called quest. I'm going to delete the libraries up top and we're going to actually create our own called using, or excuse me, we're going to use namespace and we're going to call it quest system. Uh, and this is going to allow us to be a bit more organized with our code. I'm going to cut that and paste it back in. So we have our namespace called quest system and it's going to be called a public class quest. Uh, now let's talk about what a quest has, what a quest includes, and what you can expect from this quest system. Uh, again, we have our main descriptors, right? We're going to have a name. It's going to have a description, uh, and we're going to call this a description summary, right? So this is kind of basic. Let's say you open up a quest log and you want a summary of what this quest is. That's what that description summary is going to be. We're going to have probably like a quest hint. Right, some sort of hint for the quest, uh, possibly, uh, and then you're going to have some quest dialogue. Now, don't get too complex with the dialogue, uh, or we might much later on, but for now, quest dialogue is just going to be like, hey, this is what the quest is telling you to do. 
that's basically it. We're not going to create right now. We're not going to create a, quite, a whole dialogue system that is an entire series on itself. If you have a whole bunch of like a, like a tree of information that you want to go through and base decisions on that, you know that's not what this is going to be. But we'll have the ability to add that in later on with our quest dialogue information. Uh, the other kind of information kind of thing that we're going to need is probably like a source ID. Basically, where is this quest coming from? Does it come from a rock? Does it come from a random world location? Does it come from an NPC? Does it come from a, a piece of paper? Does it just appear randomly? You know, where does it come from? We need some sort of identification of where it came from or where it's coming from. Uh, the other thing we're going to have is a quest ID, basically a number or a string of that allows us to search some sort of database where all these things are are saved, right? So uh, that's important. So now that we have that, let's go ahead and talk about the other things that are included. We have objectives. Uh, objectives are what the quest is, what it has you do, whether it be collect animal skins, whether it be to go talk to this NPC. Uh, we don't. The quest object itself does not care what those objectives are. It just needs to know that it has them and it has a certain number of them. Uh, so we'll create a list of objectives. Um, the other thing we might have are bonus objectives. So maybe you have extra things that the player can do alongside of the normal objectives that don't necessarily have to be complete to finish the quest. Right, but the quest needs to know it has those if it does. Um, we have rewards, so or we we might or might not have rewards. Maybe the quest gives out XP, maybe it gives out an item, maybe it gives a title, maybe it doesn't do anything. That's up to you. But we want to create the way for you to hand out a reward based on that. Uh, we have events. Now events are going to be fun because we can do different things with them. We can have an on completion event where basically, when the the quest is done, we can hand out the re reward we can make something happen in the game well there's anything we want we can create with an event uh, we have an on failed event so maybe if you have a timed objective and the person fails that then we have a uh, or the quest fails itself and we have to do something either we we put a big marker on the character or launch a UI event that says hey you failed the quest it sucks you have to go back you know whatever you want but we need some sort of way to call that and then we also have an on update event which is basically Let's say you complete an objective, you completed a bonus objective, something happens with the quest, we want to update it and we want to uh, get that updated information somewhere else in our project, we can have an on update event. And of course there's going to be several other things that we'll come up with along the way as we create our quest and, and basically if you guys write down in the comments you guys want to see something specific, we can go ahead and do that. Um, under under quest information too, I just realized we, we might have, it might be part of a chain quest, right? So uh, we might want a way to say, hey, this is a chain quest, and the next quest, uh, next, and the next quest is blank, right? We want a way to do that. We might want to, if, if we have a Boolean, say, is chain quest, then we want a uh, chain quest ID. And, and we'll go ahead and add that into our information. So that's what we're going to work on now. I'm going to copy all this right here, and we're going to go to copy. I'm going to go into our iQuest information thing here, uh, class script, and I'm going to paste that in there so we know what we need to include in our iQuest information uh, object holder, object here. Delete model behavior. We do not need model behavior for this video. Delete that. We're going to be doing a namespace again, quest system. If you have a complicated uh, namespace name, you might want to just copy and paste, paste it so you don't, so you don't get it wrong. Because uh, that could definitely cause some headaches later on if you have a very long uh, namespace name and you mistype it and you're like, what in the world? Why can't I get access to this? It could cause headaches later on. So make sure it's the same name. We're doing quest system here. Here uh, we have iQuest information. This is not a class. It's actually an interface. And here we're going to set up a whole bunch of gets basically that, requ that our quest information class requires. So we're going to say string name and we're going to say get. I'm going to copy this. So and paste it a whole bunch of times because a lot of our information is strings. I'm going to grab that and say description summary. I'm going to grab quest hint. I'm going to hint uh, dialogue. And actually, that's it. The other things are going to be integers for now. If you, uh, I'm going to be using integers. Excuse me. If your IDs, like if you have an ID system set up in your project and there are hex hex codes or there. Binary, I don't know. Whatever you set it up, you might you're gonna have to change the data type. Or if you actually have a ID data type, then you, again, you're gonna to want to include that and not an int. But for now, I'm just gonna do int, and I'm gonna say source 
ID and I'm going to do get. I'm going to copy that because these other three are going to be uh, are going to be ints as well, and we're going to do quest ID. And I'll change it to capital C. Um, the chain quest ID you might not want. Uh, again, it's going to be kind of up to you if you if you if you do chain quest. I'm going to include it just because. So here we we set up our interface, right? It's not doing anything. It's just basically a contract saying that whatever class inherits iQuest information, it's going to have to include methods with gets for name, description summary, hint dialog, source ID, chain request, uh, and this chain quest ID, and then quest ID, right? So it's this this bulk of code really isn't doing anything, but it's setting a setting a a, a structure for us to follow as we move along. Uh, so now that we've done that, I'm going to copy the quest system uh, namespace thing up here. I'm going to go to our quest information class, and that's what we're going to work on right now. So again, I'm deleting uh, model behavior. This is not a game object. Uh, this is just a quest information object. It's our own data type. So now that we've done that, we're going to have to uh, actually include our iQuest information. So now that we're under quest system, we can actually include it. If I didn't include namespace quest system, it actually wouldn't see the iQuest information interface. So like here, I'll, I'll show you that. If I delete it real fast, I go up here and I type in iQuest information. It doesn't know, it doesn't see it, it doesn't know where it's at. So what you have to do, if I go back and hit control Z to go through all my mistypes there, my misspellings, hit control S to save and I go back to iQuest. Oh, maybe, maybe it won't, it should. Not really sure what's going on here. Uh, let me exit out of that. I'm getting a crazy error. Uh, da, 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 da. It's throwing some errors for me, and I can't get them to go away. Let me let me uh, reload. Um, there we go. Uh, I'm just reopening all this. Sorry about that. Something got hung up. I was trying to, I was trying to prove a point and it got hung up on me, so I apologize about that. Uh, but this should work now. Okay, so hopefully... Right, we're not implementing the interface, so now it should be working. Okay, uh, so iQuest information here, we need to... Let me restart Visual Studio. All right, here we go. So sorry about all that. So now that we got that up and running, we have our request information. We got to implement the interface, right? So the way we implement the interface, if you highlight it and the little this little uh, light bulb icon shows up, you click it. It says implement interface. Click that, and it's gonna automatically load all the the methods that we that our interface requires. So we have chain quest ID and our description summary, all that stuff. But now we have to add private variables to all that so that we can actually have it to store. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we're gonna do is under class and not in the namespace. Under class, we're gonna have a private string, and again, these are just gonna be all of our descriptors. So name, private string, description summary, and I'm just gonna again highlight all this so that I can paste in. Why did I do that? Paste it in. Um, We'll have a name, a description somewhere. We got dialog. We have a hint. A hint. What else we got? Uh, da, da, da. Everything else is gonna be uh, ints. So we'll do private int quest ID. Uh, chain quest ID. Uh, if that bothers you, you can go ahead and change it here kind of bothers me so I'm actually gonna make that capitalize again and go to quest we gotta go change it in our uh, interface like that go back to quest information again I'm trying to kind of move through this quickly I know we've done this multiple times highlight source ID and I realize I just got rid of that by accident and we'll change it back up There we go. All right, we got that back. We got quest ID, source ID, hint name, dialogue, description summary, and quest or chain quest ID. 
which are all the values here. Apparently, still got quest information. To implement the source ID. Why is it throwing that error? What do I name it here? Oh, see, little errors that I think are, are pretty good. If you guys find, it, go ahead and fix. All right, so now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and get rid of all these through nodes. We're gonna actually do a return here, and we're gonna return whatever it's asking for. So we're gonna do chain quest ID. Again, I'm just gonna copy this so I can paste it real quickly and go through and change what I need. Description summary. And I'm just gonna throw all these in here. We're gonna get, once we get all this set up, it's gonna allow us to do a lot more things quicker and it's gonna be a lot better. So you'll, you'll see you'll see the, the fruits of our labor later on. It doesn't make much sense now, but I promise it'll be helpful as we continue. Plus you're setting up a, a good uh, base structure for everything and that's always important. You want a good foundation versus a shoddy one so that when you get when you go later on your your game gets bigger your project gets much larger it gets much more complex if you don't have a good structure a good base everything can just fall apart right so now we have this quest information object set up we have iQuest information is our interface we can go into quest and we can actually create a private instance of this quest ID so it'll be iQuest information so we're not directly calling the class uh, duh, 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 excuse me I need to be in the class doing that and not here so we'll do I'll do actually under all this information so you know uh, that this variable has this new object that we're creating called iQuest information uh, it has all the information that's above it right so now that we do that we can go uh, we can make a public get port because we don't want to actually access the private information that we want to go public get or public iQuest information we're gonna call it information with a capital I and we're gonna say get right and we're gonna return information and I'm gonna show you how this works so basically once you have all this set up you have this structure set up it allows us to access the information without explicitly calling the object uh, quest or uh, quest information we can do it through the interface um, and so if I, let's say if I go to um, quest objective which I haven't changed yet and I go under our start method here and I say quest Oh, we're going to have to actually use the namespace quest, so we got to get used to that. So we're going to say using, this is kind of showing you how it all works, using quest system. So now if you're working with a team and they come and open the script and say, oh, we're using the quest system. Okay, I know what classes and methods and stuff are available within that, right? And we can go quest, uh, we'll call it Q, and we'll set it equal to a new one, like that and we can say Q dot information so we're accessing that information variable now and then we're saying hey I need its hint right and then we can pass that to a method that maybe creates a UI event that says hey this is a hint because you've been taking 30 minutes to try to find whatever you need to do but all this information now is available to us and it's all been cons consolidated in that one object called quest information uh, so it's gonna make our overall quest class a bit more easy uh, to read and go through later on when it becomes much larger. Uh, but anyways, that's what we're going to be working on. This that's all we're going to be doing in this video. Uh, hopefully, you guys learned something. Hopefully, you're excited about working on this quest system together. Uh, again, all this will be available to download off the GitHub page. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys next time.